Hello guys and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm really not that active because just like you, I have a lot of things to study. Um, but I try to make videos that are straight to the point and cover things that are not in other videos. So in today's video, I want to talk about restrictive cardiomyopathy and compare that to constrictive uh, cardiomyopathy because it's really easy to get the two of them confused. So in real life, it's actually difficult to um, diagnose between the two. There's a lot of research articles out there trying to, um, you know, give doctors and help them out on uh, lab exams and uh, things like that to try to help them diagnose. But luckily for us, um, it's going to be a lot more straightforward. Um, what we need to focus on is history. So the history will really tell us a lot about um, what, cardio, what type of cardiomyopathy it's going to be. So I'm going to start with both, just saying the similarities for both. Both constrictive and restrictive primarily affect your diastolic function. So it's going to decrease your diastolic filling. Both of them are going to have the cool small sign, which is um, whenever a person breathes, you will see an increase in JVD. Normally when a person breathes, your JVD is supposed to go down. But in these patients, JVD will increase in, with inspiration, so that's called a cool small sign. Um, so, as far as restrictive cardiomyopathy, I would think of it more of like an autoimmune type of uh, thing. Sarcoidosis, amyloidosis, which causes you know your tongue to get bigger, hemochromatosis, um, which is reversible. Um, that's a cardiomyopathy that can be reversed um, if you take out the iron out. Um, uh, cardiofibrosis, scleroderma, um, and this one, unlike uh, constrictive cardiomyopathy, because the proteins and everything's kind of uh, going in all around the heart, it's going to cause diffuse thickening of the heart because those proteins and everything is kind of the fibrosis, everything's kind of going all over it. Um, so the symptoms. Um, and signs of uh, right heart failure. The symptoms are going to be ascites, edema, uh, JVD, um, enlargement of the liver and spleen, and um, this one's going to have an increase in uh, pulmonary systemic pressure. So this one, unlike constrictive cardiomyopathy, talked more about having ascites and having this increase in pulmonary systemic pressure. So maybe those are two things that you'd want to remember from the uh, signs and symptoms of restrictive cardiomyopathy. Um, you would do an echo to diagnose this. Um, there's really not much as far as treatment options. You can give diuretics you know, to, for the symptoms. Um, but the other thing you could do is a cardiac transplant, like once the heart really can't do much. Um, so that's why it's important to tell uh, in real life to diagnose which one's which because the treatment options are very different. Okay, so now with constrictive cardiomyopathy, you want to think of this one more of um, kind of infections. Uh, anything that can cause pericarditis can lead to uh, constrictive cardiomyopathy. So for this one, think of um, infections, and there are also some autoimmune things like uh, Wegener's, good pasture, uh, connective tissue things. So unlike restrictive cardiomyopathy where the whole heart kind of enlarges, this is a pericardial thickness. Just like um, pericarditis, this will lead to, you know, kind of like a chronic pericardial thickness. The signs of right heart failure, edema, ascites, enlargement of the liver and spleen, JVD, and then uh, two things that you'd want to focus on that are different from the other one is uh, sharp X and Y descents. They might throw this out in the question and um, it'll have a pericardial knock. So for this you want to diagnose, you can do an x-ray. The reason why you want to do an x-ray is because um, you can see calcifications and fibrosis around, so in the pericardium. And tuberculosis, like if they tell you, oh, you know, a Mexican patient comes in, blah, 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 this and this, and then they're having all the symptoms of right heart failure, you want to start thinking, hmm, probably TB, do an x-ray and try to see if there's any calcifications from the tuberculosis. Um, diuretics, um, just like restrictive for the symptomatic because they're both showing signs of right heart failure. And 
you can do surgical removal of the pericardium. So surgical removal of the pericardium, not the whole heart. So those are the differences.